Hi, parents. It's Robin McMahon here. Thank you for listening to Parenting Our Future, which is in the top 0.5% of all podcasts worldwide. Before we dive into this episode, I want to invite you to join my membership site, The Parent Toolbox. You can join this membership for free. It's at www.parent-toolbox.com. And this is the companion site to my show, Parenting Our Future. In the Parent Toolbox, you will find game-changing tools and resources from both myself and my guest experts who are among some of the top minds in the parenting space. There are over 100 resources to help you navigate screen time, co-parenting, meltdown, teenagers, and so much more. Join today at www.parent-toolbox.com. Now back to the show. Welcome to another episode of Parenting Our Future. And part of the future includes social media, devices, and all of the platforms that we love and hate. We are here talking about this with Forrest Bronson. He is an entrepreneur, an investor, a speaker, and the co-founder and CEO at Digital Detox, where he leads global initiatives for digital wellness. With a customer base in over 70 countries and a deep passion for improving the relationship society has with technology, Forrest travels the world to better understand how technology impacts our lives. And he's also Welcome, Forrest. I'm really excited to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Robin. Excited for this conversation. So tell me what led you to digital detox. Why why this topic? Why now? Yeah, so you know the, the company has an interesting story, um, which uh, we're happy to unpack. But um, you know, I'm a parent. I have kids that are uh, almost nine this weekend and and six. And you know, it's it's something that's impacting every corner of the globe, every age group, every demographic. And yeah. you know, I'll get out there from the start. Digital detox, like we're not anti tech. We're not even mm. anti social media. Um, uh, I have the latest iPhone. I love it. Um, but we <laughs> are pro balance, right? And everyone can benefit from taking some small small steps to improve a little bit of balance. If you could get a half hour a week, if you could get two hours a week back of your life compounded um, over your lifetime, that's just a tremendous amount of opportunity cost uh, that you could be spending elsewhere. We're also pro connection. We want uh, uh, parents and their kids to have better connections, kids to be set up for success and uh, be better digital citizens uh, when they're going out into the real world. Um, so that, that's what we're all about. I'm, I'm wildly passionate about the space. Um, I'll give you kind of the, the 30 second history of the company, you know, my dear friend, Levi Felix, um, I'd known since elementary school, he, he started the company in 2012 after a life changing experience. And, you know, the, the start of the company was really focused on live experiences, um, retreats, summer camps for adults, that kind of thing. And it was uh, growing into just this global phenomenon. He had a publishing deal and he ended up dying of a brain tumor at 32 in 2017. And oh so gosh. the 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 company went on a little bit of hiatus, and um, I took it over. My previous uh, company, I I grew and scaled and exited. And um, after uh, after that transition, I took over the company in 2020. And um, uh, talk about timing, January 2020. Yeah. Uh, you could see where this is going. We had global <laughs> events uh, planned and sold out camps. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it doesn't yeah, ring a right? bell. And then 45 days later, COVID shut us down. So, so we've been focused the last couple of years a lot on research, uh, talking to communities, traveling the world, understanding how it's impacting. We work a lot with schools and parents and kids and uh, singles and you name it. Um, and uh, wow. now we're, we're back on full force. So that was a long-winded answer of I'm wildly passionate to get folks uh, having better connections, um, uh. less attached to their devices, and uh, ultimately set up to be happier and healthier. Oh, I love that. And I want to know more about adult summer camps, but we, we could talk about that another time. That, uh, that sounds like lots of fun. Um, yeah. And and actually, it, I would think that the pandemic was a bit of a gift because you've got people really diving into social media, really diving into their devices, looking for connection in kind of all the wrong places, right? All the wrong places and, you know, doom scrolling and everything. It, yeah. it was a strange time for the world, right? Um, we were We were all there. Um, so yeah, I think it definitely made the challenge worse. It, it heightened the profile of, uh, addiction to our devices, especially with our youth, which is just very, very sad and transitioning back into you know, the real school world. A lot of them aren't, uh, aren't prepared. So, um, it was, a it, it was a challenging time and it's, um, uh, kind of snowballed into even more challenges now. Yeah. You know, and, and it's really difficult from a parenting perspective because I think a lot of us feel like we've lost our kids to social media, to gaming. Uh, and there seems to be sort of a boy gaming issue, a 
girls on social media. I don't want to paint it. You know, it's not black and white for sure, but um, you can definitely see it. And, and I see it in my own home too. It's harder to get as, and as our kids get older, right? Like my kids are teenagers. So as they get older too, they're naturally moved away from us, you know, because that's the way they're supposed to be. And then they have these devices too. So even when they're present, they're not present. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think it's the, I'd go as far as to say it's the parenting challenge of our generation, right? Yes. I mean, it's parents report. It's one of the top three conflicts in the household um, next to curfew and bedtime, a couple other things, but um, consistently ranks in the top one, two or three of um, issues causing conflict between parents and, and kids. And we find the, the breaking point age is kind of sixth grade through 12th grade. That, those are some of the most challenging years. Um, prior to that, there's certainly challenges and um, it depends on the community and an interesting thing. And, you know, we have probably had conversations with 200 schools throughout the United States and in um, the UK this year. Um, it, it's very community specific and that makes sense, right? If I'm in Lake Oswego, Oregon, it doesn't really matter so much what a parent and kid are doing in Boston, Massachusetts. We just, we don't interact. So Parents are, are very tribal and communities are tribal. And so a lot of the rules and um, kind of protocol we find is consistent by community. So one example, a lot of communities have a, a steadfast rule of uh, wait till eight and parents sign a contract, no phones or social media till eighth grade. Um, other communities, they mm. haven't even heard of that. So um, yeah, you know, it, it, I haven't heard of that. That's yeah, yeah. So, great. You no, know, and and a lot of the data coming out now is showing how successful that is. The the wonderful Adam Grant Orton professor um, just spoke about a, a very very large study. I mean, I could send that over later. Um, how waiting until high school for social media, um, or I'm sorry, social media before the age of high school is just detrimental effects on uh, mental health, on empathy, on uh, so many issues as as these young folks are developing. So um, yeah, parenting challenge of our generation. It's it's a complicated one. Um, and, I, and I'll also say, you know, I'll preface this with, you know, look, I'm a parent, it's challenging and I empathize so much. Um, I go through some of the same challenges uh, with decisions that I make that I make with my kids. Um, we're starting to see now and the data is showing that it starts at a much earlier age through modeling, right? And so, you know, by the time you get to, you know, sixth, seventh grade, yeah, that's when a lot of the issues with the teen are, are coming to the forefront. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of that is stemming from, and, and I, I want to be careful not to shame any parents, because again, like you're not a bad parent, um, but the, the, a lot of the modeling is, you know, being at the dinner table on your phone, uh, disrupting an interaction with your kid for notification and kind of teaching and normalizing this behavior. Um, two things going on. One, you're, you're, you're modeling that that's appropriate behavior. And then two, you're, you're potentially missing out on amazing connection and interaction. So it's, we're, we're working, you know, when the question is how do we get better at middle school and high school age, let's start in kindergarten, right? Um, yeah. not only with the kid, but with uh, the behaviors of the parent. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't work to say, don't do what I do, do what I say. Cause we all know our kids won't do what we say. They will do what we do. And modeling is very powerful. So if you don't want your kids doing the thing that you don't want them to do, make sure you're not doing it. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Right. We do miss out on connection. We are missing interactions. We are also missing beautiful moments with our kids that bring us joy, like connection brings us joy and um, connection is everything. It really is. And we are missing out on it. My, I, I do personally feel, and, and I'm curious to see what you think about this, that our kids generation, this could also be their, their opportunity for their own awakening for them to say, you know what, we've got to get back to in-person stuff. We've got it. Like, this is not okay. We've missed out. Uh, and, and it's not about shaming the parents. It, you know, we've gone through a lot world events, pandemics, all of that stuff. I do feel like we will come full circle. What do you think about that? Yeah, so it's great that you mentioned that because th that's what the data is showing. So uh, interesting with teens um, and some of our recent uh, research, over 45% are raising their hand saying, look, I'm recognizing how this is impacting my mental health and my physical health. I, 
I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to be on it as much. I don't want to be as dependent on my, on my technology. So um, our young generation are, are already starting to stand up, not everywhere, but we're seeing some communities where they're doing that. There's even a, um, a, a going flip phone movement where they're getting rid of their um, uh, smartphone and going old school. And that's great. And we see that consistently with adults too. I think something like 65% are saying, yeah, I, I, I want to get better. I don't want to be attached to my device as much. I don't want to spend as much time. Um, so yeah, everyone recognizes the impacts and the issues. Um, and so now it's a matter of, uh, let's actually put a, a desire into action and, uh, mm. and get a little bit better. But I um, yeah, to your point, yes, they, they want that. They crave that in-person experience. Um, but it's, it's tough when everyone else in the community is also doing it. Um, and it raises a lot of other issues and challenges, but, uh, we'll, we'll get there. I, I, I long-term, I think we'll, we'll be, we'll be fine. Um, it's just going to take some work. Yeah. And it's like a new toy, right? For us and our kids. And, you know, I've said this many times and many times in this podcast, you know, when my son Aiden was born, he was born in 2008 and that kid has never met a screen he doesn't like, you know, that was the right. year we got the big, you know, flat screen TV, right? When we upgraded from the sure, tube, sure. To the, you, know, you know, all that stuff. Um, and, but one of the things that I like to use uh, with my clients and with my own parenting is, is the, the injustice. Like, are you going to let advertisers control your life? Are you going to let algorithms control your life? You know, that's kind of the way I talk about getting them off devices is sort of, you know, and, and again, I, I'm with you. I don't want to vilify social media. I don't want to vilify uh, screens in any way, shape or form. They have their place a hundred percent. But there is also the dark side of it that isn't so good. And we, you know, when we talk to our kids about being used, you know, that's, that's something that can get them mad and make them want to like say no to, to that stuff. Right. Yeah. A lot, lot to unpack there. So on the, on the screen time, you know, it's interesting a few years ago and historically that's been the the big question, how much screen time is appropriate by age. Yeah. And we get hundreds of those questions a day and you know that, that's still meaningful. Like you don't want, for a lot of reasons, you don't want to be on a screen for 15 hours, but it, it's transitioning more to less about the amount of time and more about what you're doing. So for example, I would mm -hmm. much rather my nine-year-old son spend two hours on a Saturday on a great anatomy course or astronomy course on the iPad um, than scrolling through TikTok, right? And he's obviously yeah. not on TikTok at, at his age, um, but, uh, you know, making those comparisons and same with adults as well. Um, the average teen, I think, spends something like nine hours a day on social media and their phone, which is, which is mind boggling. Um, but yeah, so it's a, a, a screen time slash what you're actually, uh, what you're actually doing a discussion. Um, but yeah, there, there's, I think that the concerns and dangers span a, a, a pretty broad set, right? So you have um, uh, just a lot of uh, uh, social issues and social pressure, social bullying. Um, you have a lot of bad influencers out there and this applies yeah. to adults and kids, but oh my goodness, like there is some really categorically incorrect influencers out there that are spreading really poor information. And from a, um, a especially, you know, someone young that doesn't know how to discern some of those uh, data points, um, that's, that's dangerous. And I'll give you one extreme example. We have a, a psychiatrist that's uh, on our, on our committee and um, he's done a lot of research uh, with his uh, psychiatry community. And there's a lot of kids that are coming in and adults um, because they're mimicking symptoms of uh, diagnosed disorders. So borderline personality disorder, um, other depression disorders of influencers that they're seeing. And then they come in thinking that they have this disorder because they've been spending so much time manifesting those symptoms from watching someone on TikTok and Instagram. And then uh, the doctor's like, no, you, you, you don't have this. Um, and then it becomes this battle. So it, it's it's complicated wow. and there's some very bad uses of social that are that are impacting um so that that's on like the the bad information side and the and the mimicking side whole another issue is just self image um yeah. a lot of what you see isn't real obviously with filters and um stage sets um and for for someone young that's that's heartbreaking. I mean, you're, you're seeing that and you're trying to keep up with the Joneses and you're, you're trying to, um, uh, trying to have this personification of, uh, of this perfect image, um, which is just, it, it really, really sad. So it's, uh, impacting all ages, but, um, teen girls in particular are some of the yeah. most impacted, unfortunately.
Yeah. And unfortunately, like attracts like. So when you like something, you just get fed more of it and your view of the world gets narrower and narrower. A absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, um, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, but yeah, I mean, two of the big social media um, kind of constructs, you know, you have um, positive reinforcement and social approval. And those are two fundamental things that um, any human is looking for. And Social media is just this perfect engine um, to be addicted to get those things, right? So having a post, getting a like, getting social approval. A lot of kids will delete a post. A lot of teens will delete a post if it doesn't have more than 100 likes within two hours because they can't deal with the, um, uh, the, the kind of the real cue or, or pain of not having that social approval. Oh. Um, so it's this never ending loop. And then with the advent of endless scroll, it's literally a slot machine of not only dopamine release, but of, um, constantly trying to find, um, uh, that next best thing. And then, um, constantly refreshing to try to find, uh, that social approval. So, um, put it down, go out and enjoy what I like to tell folks is I'd much rather be out at the concert than watching someone on TikTok at the concert, <laughs> right? Go, go, go experience it yourself. And then you're just going to have so much more fun. Totally. Oh my gosh. So how can we, how can we find out how, how bad our habits are? <laughs> Do you have a tool for that by any chance? <laughs> so not how bad your habits are, but where there's, there's yeah, I know I didn't frame it very right. Improve. I didn't frame it exactly how I wanted to, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a shameless plug, uh, digital detox, we, we launched uh, the Dora score, um, recently. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a five minute, um, assessment and I, and I want to preface five minutes. Cause if you go in thinking 60 seconds, you're going to be very disappointed and frustrated. Um, it's a solid five minutes and, and you might finish in three minutes, but it's not going to be 60 seconds. So I'm um, going with five focus minutes. Um, but yeah, we, we developed this. And I think another important thing with, with Dora, you know, th there's a lot of digital addiction quizzes out there that were quickly put together. Um, we spent months um, with some of the top mental health professionals um, in the country developing this um, and also paneling thousands of individuals uh, to validate the data. Um, oh, so wow. it's a very, it's a very sophisticated measure, but a, a, hopefully in a very digestible, easy way. Um, and yeah, five, five minute assessment is 25 ish questions or so, and it'll give you a ranking. There's four different risk levels. It's uh, scored on zero to 120. Um, it'll give you kind of just perspective and, and baseline of, of where you're at and, uh, how, how stuff's impacting you. And it's, it's, it's nearly impossible to game every question and every response is scored slightly differently based on the severity of that question and um, oh. type of response. So it's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but, um, putting the technicality aside, it's a pretty fun assessment and it'll give you a, um, kind of good, good ranking. And if you're, if you're in the red zone or orange zone, um, there's hope it's okay. Uh, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't yeah. mean you're a bad parent. Um, uh, but, uh, hopefully gives you a kind of perspective of, uh, of, uh, where you need to make some calibrations. I love, I love it. And I can verify it is about five minutes. I did mine yesterday, uh, in advance of this, I am a 26, uh, That's on, great. The, on the score. So I'm in the yellow zone, uh, still could have some room for improvement. I will, I will admit that I've, I've sort of adopted this habit where I watch TV while also playing a game on my phone. So, you know, that's not ideal. And then I sort of like throw my phone towards the end of the couch. And then I'm like jonesing for it a little bit. So I identify that there are some parts uh, where I'm not as present as I could be, you know, some parts of my day. Um, so that's, yeah. So that's a really great, helpful tool. And you also, you also explain it in the, uh, in the results uh, as well, like what that means, how many, like 32% of adults currently fall into the yellow range that I'm in, you know, different things like that. So it is really neat to see that. And, uh, and I love that it's a free tool that you provide. It's on your site, right? Digitaldetox.com. So yeah, digitaldetox.com slash score. Just go to the homepage. You, you could you could find a link to it. And um, we're working next on it. So it's catered more towards adults. If you're a teen, you could take it. There's going to be some questions that probably don't apply. Um, but we're actually working with a whole other panel on a on a student version. And we have a couple hundred schools ready to um, license that starting in the fall. Um, so that's uh, something exciting to look forward to. And it'll be very specific um, for students and uh, some of the challenges that they're facing. Hmm. So how would that be different then for a student versus an adult? 
So the the questions are different and then the the scoring is a little bit different and then the result output's different. So there'll be some overlapping questions, but yeah. um, there's some questions that are much more specific to teenagers um, and how they um, are dealing kind of with empathy and how they're dealing with social wow. interactions okay. um, versus um, with adults. It's, it's just a little bit different. So there's going to be some overlap, um, but uh, certainly some kind of mutually exclusive questions. And then the the scoring level is different just because, um, you know, someone that's a sixth grader, for example, um, it, it's just a, it, each question has a different um, risk level. So, uh, for example, one question that you might have seen on the, uh, the, the Dora score proper, um, it's a different risk profile for an adult versus a teenager, it might be right. more or less depending. So the scoring model is a little bit different. Okay. And so that's aimed at school age kids, grade six to so, so, right now it's six through 12. Um, we're still, okay. We're still in uh, testing on it, but um, the, the most likely six through twelve. Yeah. And so, what happens if you have a child that is in the red zone? Yeah, no. So we're working on a couple different things. One, um, we're working with a lot of schools right now, and schools want it because they want to just better understand by grade level and by schools within a district um, how digitally well are certain schools versus others, um, and just mm -hmm. to get a baseline of where we're at. I mean, schools they're calling constantly because it's it's a major issue, and so they they need the data to kind of better understand. For the, and we might have something that we're licensing through the schools and to give to the students. But um, great question because this segues into something that we're launching later this summer. Don't quote me on that, but the goal is later this summer um, journey, and it's uh, for adults um, to start. And it's a, a, a pretty much taking a very deep inventory. So picture the five minute assessment you took on Dora. It's a much yeah. more robust assessment. And this is a paid uh, paid program, but um, takes full inventory of all your habits and behaviors. And then we have a very systematic approach to tackle those based on um, a, a formula of severity and impact um, to ease of improvement. Um, and we just start chipping away to get you down to a very low score of green. Um, and so that, that's, uh, there's nothing really like that right now. And we're really excited about that. We're working with some wow. breathtaking, uh, breathtaking folks to, to develop that and test that. Um, and it's, it's going to be relatively inexpensive in the big scheme of things. Um, but that to answer your question, we're going to have available, um, for, uh, teens as well. So there'll be so a, the a different model, but it's, um, a, a really cool journey where, um, it's going to just e each week we're working on a different, uh, different focus and, uh, helping getting, uh, some attention back and, uh, and decrease distraction and, uh, uh, improve some behaviors. That's great. And let's be honest, parents need a helping hand, right? You know, again, the things that I've said before remain true that we are, you know, digital nomads, right? We're the pioneers in, in this digital age. And it's as new to us as it, is, as it is our kids, right? So we're sort of caught by it too. And we don't really know how to get ourselves off, never mind our kids. So I think that's fantastic. So can I can I ask you a couple of questions about that? I know that it by the time this is this episode comes out, you may have just launched it, you may be about to, or it still might be a little bit down the road. So I'll make sure to up, update the show notes with where you're at with this because I think it's just a really powerful program. Sure. And I'm all about helping parents with the stuff that is hard, right? The stuff that we just don't know about. So uh, does it include, is it like a group coaching program or is it just like uh, regular emails to you or like, how do you help? Yeah. Help so in, and, and I'll, I'll try to answer some of that because some we're still testing um, sure. in some of our focus groups and uh, uh, getting exciting. validity data on it. Yeah. Um, and before I answer some of the mechanics of it to your previous point, you know, it's, it, it could be used in different tracks. So if you're an adult or if you're a parent, um, a lot of parents are going to use it just for themselves unrelated to parenting, but how do I improve as a, as a 40 year old dad to, uh, just be less attached to my phone? Absolutely. Another one, yeah. be, uh, education tips on, okay, how, how can I have some support on dealing with my teen? Right. Um, and then the third would be for the actual teen. Right. And so, yeah, we're, we're testing a few different mechanics of how it actually comes out. And I, I don't want to talk too detailed about that because by the time this comes out, um, this might change a lot, but yeah, all fair you know, enough. It, it's a combination of think of a kind of systematic coaching each week. And it's a combination of, um, email SMS, MMS with audio, um, cool, okay. possibly some tangible things in the mail to work on. So it's a, 
it's a, it's a comprehensive program, but a, a very digestible one. We, we want to keep it. We're, we're not developing a um, you know this online course thing. It's not like that. A lot of those um, can be kind of cheesy. Um, this is a very personal, um, specific to you and uh, where you're at. You know, getting uh, getting these nudges and um, encouragement um, and uh, check ins to start improving some of these things that are going to go a long way. That's phenomenal. And thank you for telling us a little bit about it. If nothing else, it just, um, I think, you know, gets us more curious and uh, we can anticipate what it's going to look like. So that's exciting. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for doing that too. Like, we did it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And yeah, and I apologize uh, if I'm being a little opaque on it. Uh, no. some, of, some of it's not released yet. So, and I want to make sure I don't uh, uh, misspeak on a couple of features that are going to be out, but net, net, a very personalized program that's easy to digest, uh, to improve on what's specifically challenging you. And everyone's a little bit different. Some have a little bit more challenge with distraction. Others it's with kind yeah. of compulsion of checking in others mm. it's with connection. So um, we're, we're going to help chip away at that and uh, get you in a better spot. Well, and all kids are different, right? You know, boys' brains are different than girls' brains. You know, there's a lot um, about gaming that really attracts boys to it, you know, especially kids sure. with ADHD, you know, they can lack focus, but also have hyper-focus. I have a kid that has ADHD and OCD, so that combination can be really tough socially. So he goes to those games because he can fit in there. And he, then sure. those social norms are not um, really enforced online at all, right? So, um, and, and look, you know, as a mom of teenagers, I I see the bad influencers. I, I see that stuff too. And it is somewhat shocking that somebody else's voice is in your child's ear who may be completely opposite of what you your values are. Absolutely. And I th you had a previous guest that talked a lot about that, even with games at a young age, Roblox and uh, yeah. um, I forget the other one, but yeah, there's, uh, it starts at an early age of uh, um, some bad actors uh, coming in, um, whether they're being intentionally bad or if uh, the content's just influencing in a negative way. So um, yeah, it, it takes, it takes a, a village to um, help combat some of these challenges right now. Yeah. And I have to say, wait till eight is something I think every community should do. There's nothing worse than having your, your child see everybody else get a phone in grade five. And you're like, I, I, I guess I have to, you know, I, and of course no parent has to, there is definitely value in saying no and holding your ground. And it gets really tough too. It's wildly complicated. So yeah, our, our chief psychiatrist was talking about this the other day. Um, if you're the only kid that's not on, then that could have its own massive yeah. psychological impacts long-term. So it, it really does take a community and it doesn't have to be the entire school. It has to be a, at least a large enough group where you feel like you have a tribe, right? Um, and, yeah. you know, we're, we're still um, synthesizing the data on what that number is. Is that six or is that 60, <laughs> you know? Um, but it's, yeah. uh, th there's a number, um, but yeah, the, the data, is just overwhelming. Um, and I'll, I'll send you the study uh, Adam, Grat, Adam Grant spoke about, but um, uh, it, yeah, social media prior to high school, um, bad impacts long-term. And, uh, you know, I think eventually we'll, we'll start doing a better job of having age-appropriate education or, around uh, some of the risks and um, things to look out for. So we're preparing kids at a young age um, yeah. to be you know better digital citizens and uh, um, have yeah. more balance. Because again, going back to digital detox and our mantra, we're not necessarily anti-social media, but we're anti-social media if it's impacting your life in a negative way, which in many cases, if not most cases, it is. Uh, consistently, the data shows that the more time you spend on social media, the more lonely you are. Um, and that yeah. sounds maybe counterintuitive, you're being social, but um, every study, every data point we look at, um, it's a consistent uh, trend line. Uh, more hours spent, uh, increase in loneliness. Um, so if we could get to a point where we have um, you know, better balance and we're using it and, you know, teens are using it in a much more responsible way. Um, you know, some th think about Netflix. Netflix is great. We have amazing video content out there, but we're not spending nine hours a day watching movies. That's probably not healthy. Right. But there's, there's a time and place to enjoy television and, uh, have that a, a part of your life. And there might be a room for that, um, with phones as well. That said back to the save it till eight, we haven't found one data point or study that shows a negative impact from from waiting right so um so, oh. so 
Yeah. So, so by, by waiting, you're not missing out. Like the, the, nothing bad's going to happen, only the yeah. opposite. So um, if that's you, if a you good could, point. Yeah. I mean, the, the, what possibly is going to go wrong by uh, by not having access to social media before it could. <laughs> well, yeah. And, you know, I think we we have to get creative as parents, too. You know, I see so many babies toddlers in their strollers with a phone you know like easy is not necessarily easy in the moment is not going to necessarily create habits later on that are going to be sustainable so you know sort of I would say you know start with the end in mind knowing that this probably isn't the best thing it may stop a meltdown now but you know that's why people like me exist I'll help you through the meltdown without using a phone without using a screen right absolutely yeah and you know again like there's there's a place like the so emergencies happen like you know, we're, we're sure. huge proponents of not having phones at the dinner table or not having phones at the restaurant um i was in a situation recently where there was a medical emergency with a close family member yes you have to take the call like of course like yeah that's not what we're talking about here what we're talking about is being out at the family dinner restaurant and being on your phone for 90 percent of the time um while the kids aren't interacting with you. So that that's um, uh, arguably, there, there's not many arguments justifying that behavior. Um, so again, like if you do that, I'm not shaming you, I'm with you, like it's a challenge, uh, but that's just one easy opportunity to form better family connection and also teach some really cool behavior. Yeah. Okay. So we were talking, uh, you mentioned a past episode I had with uh, Titania Jordan, mm-hmm. who uh, who is a, um, who's uh, with Bark Technologies and um, and they they do similar but different than what what you're doing and and one of the things that Titania and I talked about was filters showing you legitimately looking like a young child uh, and, and my 40 plus self uh, and and so what I wanted to ask you about is how how if you know how how will the advent of AI now that is that is in our lives how do you see that changing things? Is it going to change it for the better or the worse? Yeah, a lot to unpack there. So first off, I'm a huge fan of Titania and what they're doing at Bark, um, phenomenal company. Um, and she's uh, she's wonderful. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm trying to think where to start here. And this is obviously <laughs> a hot topic uh, in Congress right now where we're talking about um, AI and the impacts of chat GPT. Um, I think there's a lot of directions we can take it. We're already seeing issues in schools with uh, kids bringing in reports written by chat GPT um, and, and figuring out how to combat that. Um, it's a modern day cliff notes, if you will, on steroids. Yeah. Um, AI, you know, it's interesting. I just had another conversation. Um, so if we separate out the the kid situation for a second, um, just with dating and uh, AI girlfriends and boyfriends now, um, and that's becoming extremely popular um, and that's going to heavily impact the online dating space, but then also just the human connection space um, where you could have a, a completely customized uh, AI relationship. Um, similar to that movie, Her. Do you remember that? Yeah, um, yeah I was just thinking, yeah, with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. So similar to that, but much more robust and customized and modern now. So yeah, that that's a you. So is AI going to impact negatively or positively? I think both, right? I mean, there's going to be obviously some amazing impacts and we've already seen that. And, you know, there's been machine learning and AI for a long time. I mean, in, in medicine and uh, um, imaging, you know, there's lots of great uses of technology for sure. Um, can bad actors get a hold of it? Absolutely, right? And uh, what Titania was um, uh, alluding to is, um, you know, a, a potential bad actor that's an adult looking like they're a teen interacting with a teen and uh, getting into a predatory environment um obviously bad use of ai right yeah i think another harmful use of ai and um you know some of this just is basic filters but you know teenagers putting filters on themselves and then taking it off and looking in the mirror and they don't look like the filter so it just oh. it's an impact on self image issues and that's not just girls it's uh um guys too and um yeah. um uh, it's a uh, that's real. Right. And so, um, they're, they're seeing, you know, back in the the nineties, it was all about, uh, you know, uh, image issues by movie stars. And now it's that Mm -hmm. on steroids with, um, billions of uh, potential images that are, that are skewing your perception of, of reality, um, not only with the world, but also with yourself. So, um, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot that, uh, we haven't seen yet and, uh, we're just on the tip of the iceberg of what some of the impacts are, but it's something I think every parent needs to be extremely cognizant of, um, on everything from 
homework and learning um, the positives and the negatives uh, to um, how it's actually impacting relationships and uh, and so forth. That's such a good point. Wow. I didn't think about it quite like that, but that is, yeah, that's a really good point. Wow. Um, okay. So switching gears just a little bit. Uh, what about the, the election in 2024, um, in the States, uh, obviously, um, how, how do you think, you know, what will, will the candidates evolve in the way they're using social media? Will they, you know, is it going to be more diabolical? I think so. Um, and again, like I'm, I'm not a political expert, but I would say yes. Um, I think there's two areas there. One, how candidates are going to be using um, just for their own platforms. But then two, how do they, what I'm a little bit more interested in is how are they interjecting this topic into their platform, right? Is this going to be a main talking point, um, AI, the impacts, um, digital citizen, di digital citizenship and how it's impacting society. And I, um, I'd venture a guess that the candidate, uh, he or she that, um, puts a decent emphasis on that, they're going to um, get a lot of attention and a, a lot of respect from uh, um, people that care. I mean, and most parents care. That's the thing is um, I, we, we've yet to find a large group of parents that just don't care <laughs> about what's going on. They they care and they, they, they want change. And um, I think uh, we might start seeing that on the campaign trail um, where they're talking about uh, digital citizenship and um, uh, some of these uh, major privacy issues um, and uh, big tech and uh, AI and machine learning and everything. So it's going to be interesting to see how it unfolds. But um, if I were a betting man, I'd, I'd throw a little bit of money on it's going to be at least some part of the theme. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't disagree. I, and I also think that, you know, it's going to amplify this misinformation, disinformation, perhaps as well. And and I even see my kids, right, you know, that they'll, they'll play online. And, um, you know, one of my boys, you know, he's like, Oh, well, I, I, I don't think this guy is that bad now. And I'm like, Oh, tell me more about that. You know, like, what do you mean? Where are you getting your information from? You know, like, what are we talking about? Right. Or he'll say, you know, yeah, wh whatever it is, um, also has, yeah, been influenced by, uh, one or two bad influencers as well. Uh, and of course, uh, for uh, some of them are about women, uh, and their roles. And, uh, so, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a hot topic for me to, to make sure we, we, we address that. Right. So, how do we have these conversations and how do we keep the, how do we keep the facts straight? It's really hard. Um, and I'll, yeah. I'll give you an example unrelated to politics, but um, going back to politics. Yeah. Like it's, uh, you know, if we look at 2016, 2020 election, I think it's going to be even more amplified uh, now. I mean, you have uh, deep fakes, you have AI creating fake news stories um, that are very, very difficult to discern what's, what's real and what's not. So yeah. um, it's, it's going to be a mess. I Deep hate to be a, scare the heck out of me like that. Whoa. Oh, yeah. And so uh, another thing with teens and young kids on social media, I, so this is going to be a personal opinion. Um, I, I just I don't really want images of my kids online. Right. I, they they need to wait until they're a little bit older and can make those decisions at a um, more kind of practical standpoint of, of what that means um, and uh, who owns those images and, and those rights. But um, a lot, a, a lot of things can happen when uh, images get into the wrong hands. So mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in terms of misinformation and, and, and whatnot, like one thing we look at it with influencers, uh, nutrition is a great example. There's some really bad nutrition influencers out there and nutrition has been something that's been debated for decades. That's not a, that's not a new debate. Um, yeah. that said, what happens is you have a, you know, teenager or even adult, and they're looking at kind of some of the vanity metrics. Okay. This influencer has a million followers and they happen to be in great shape and, and great looking. So whatever they're saying must be accurate in terms of, right. um, nutrition or workout or, or health. Um, but that, that's just simply not the case. It's very easy to buy a million followers. It's very easy to, um, Photoshop and appear, uh, to be uh, different than you actually are. And even if those things are genuine, um, just the credential audit, um, isn't there. Like we we've done some anecdotal look at, um, not just nutrition, but a lot of different influencers. And so many of them are just absolutely not qualified at all to be giving some of this advice. And, um, you put that in the, in the hands of someone that again, doesn't quite have the tools to discern what's, uh, accurate and not. And, um, 
back to the example of uh, going into the psychiatry office thinking that they have the, this, this disorder or starting this new trend or fad because um, this influencer told them it was the right thing to do. Um, that could be really dangerous. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Well, there is good news. And the good news is people like you are in this world. People like you are here helping us because we need the help, right? Parenting is hard enough without adding this in. And uh, we do need people like you. And I'm so glad you're a parent too. You've really got skin in the game when you've got kids uh, with a, with a company like this, with a product like this. So, um, I would love it for everybody to go to digitaldetox.com, take, you know, take the, the, the test it's score, um, and just, you know, see where you land, just see where you land and know that that is a representation of what you're modeling for your kids without shame, without judgment, just notice it, right. Just see where you're at so that you can, be the change that you want to see in your own family. That's an important point. And again, I, I want to double down on not shaming. Um, it's very similar to, you know, going to your doctor and realizing, wow, I need to exercise more. Um, something metabolically is not right or whatever it is. Um, no shame in that. Great. You're, you're getting good data points and making change, but best time to plant a tree is yesterday. Second best time is today. So um, uh, yeah. And, and the good news is most folks um, want to improve. Um, they don't want, no one wants to be lonely and uh, distracted and, uh, and stressed out. Out, no one wants yeah. that. And so, um, you know, together with a lot of uh, other companies in the ethos, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to provide the right content and, and tools to, to get there. That's what we're, that's what we're striving for. Well, thank you so much for being here, Forrest. It's, it's so great um, to, to have this at our fingertips, literally. So thank you so much for making a difference and for sharing this with us. I just, I really love what you're doing and I can't wait to find out more about what you guys have coming up. And so maybe we can talk about that when those, when those things come out. I'd love to be back. Robin, thanks so much for having me today. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this edition of my podcast, Parenting Our Future. I'm parent coach Robin McMahon. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please share it with someone who you think might also need to hear this message. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you like my work, I'd be grateful if you gave me a five-star rating. For those of you who like my content and want more, visit me at yellingcurebook.com to get your copy of my book and to find other resources to help you. Until next time, I am wishing you and your family peace and connection.